just one of their mobile kitchens that they actually is that even some uh, what I call habitual beautiful stop and shop in the Wilton penalty but it was actually a tax and that it Good evening and welcome once again to the Marty Heiser Show. We have an incredible show lined up for you. Now, if there are little children around and they've been naughty or nice, I want you to bring them into the room and set them down because we're not going to talk about politics. We're not going to rant, rant about an FBI that's gone crazy. We're not going to talk about what went on in Alabama. Is it a good thing? We're not going to talk about that stuff. Tonight, it's going to be rock and roll and a very special guest is going to be joining us later in the day or later in the evening because, as you know, it's that time of year when Santa Claus is making his rounds. Now, I know what you're thinking. Yeah, right. Santa Claus. I don't believe in Santa Claus. We have spared no expense to bring all the way down from the North Pole the real Santa Claus. This isn't some bell ringer with a with a with a red kettle outside some store somewhere or something like that. Not one of the most. This is the real Santa Claus. Now and he's not coming tonight to bring presents to all the girls and boys that have been good. He is coming tonight in kind of a preparation to sort of, you know, talk it out. And we're going to get to ask Santa Claus some really important questions, like how in the world are you able to go down the chimney like that? And why didn't you eat all the cookies we left out for you, just part of them? And who really is naughty and who's really nice? And even the people that are naughty, can't they be nice? These are questions Santa Claus is going to solve for us tonight. So I want you to stay right there. And if there are young children in the house, have them join you because we have an incredible guest coming up. But first... Every red-blooded American that was born in America has grown up wanting to be a rock star. And the people you're going to meet tonight are still following that dream of being a rock star, just living for the music, just grooving and hanging. And like Courtney will tell you, uh, um, having young men attracted to her and wanting to talk to her in various drinking establishments. So tonight, I'm, I'm so privileged to have a band called Decades, and they're joining us. Here they are. The whole lot of them, and their fearless leader, leader, their Mick Jagger, their Alice Cooper, is is Joe. Joe, thank you so much. Thanks, Marty. Thanks for, for having us. Really, I really appreciate that. We we had you come in earlier and lay down some music for us. But could you just quickly introduce the band and tell us something that we would find interesting about each one? And we're going to start with Courtney. And Courtney, frankly, is the bloom among the thorns, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Absolutely. She's the salami in the sandwich. <laughs> Between the breads. Uh, Courtney LaPere <laughs> is our lead vocalist. And I interestingly, she represents the 20 something decade. Uh, she is, uh, she came to us uh, with a background in musical theater and theater more than rock and roll music. And joining this band was her first foray into the rock world. Wow. And as I said to, you, said to you earlier, she gets the most improved award from the band because she's grown hugely in the two years that we've been together playing together. So Excellent. that's Courtney. Uh, Bobby Ralston, our lead guitarist, is uh, engineer by day and uh, musician by night. He's incredible talent. Uh, we're talking about that, like, kind of like Superman, like mild-mannered reporter, absolutely. and then he turns into a rock god he, at night. He, he puts the cape on and the yeah. muscles bulge, and, uh, and he hauls a lot have of you equipment seen him? Have you seen him in tights, or is that just on those special ones? <laughs> yeah, no, occasionally. Occasionally, occasionally yeah. yeah. Okay. No, yeah. That's that's Kevin. Uh, <laughs> I prefer Green Lantern, not Superman. Green Lantern, that's good. Yeah. That's good. I saw the movie. Uh, <laughs> Frank Alenti is, a, is our drummer, and Frank is the farthest, comes from Monroe all the way up here to Brookfield to play with us every Thursday night when we practice. Uh, tremendous talent again on the drums. And uh, Frank and I have known each other for four or five, maybe six years. And this is our first time getting to play together in a band, so we've enjoyed that. And lastly, down at the end is Kevin McLean, And Kevin is my nephew. Um, we picked him up because uh, 
we needed another guitarist, and Kevin was playing bass in a cover band. Uh -huh. uh, I knew him to be a talented guitarist. I said, look, let's, let's bring Kevin in and let him play with us, and he's been a great addition to the band. So Excellent. Uh, Excellent. That's, that's, you, you've met us all. Now, um, let me, okay, look, Frank, let me ask you, because we talked a little bit before, what do you like best about being in a band? And I understand you've been in a couple different bands, but what is it, what's the attraction? What's the moth to the flame? What keeps you coming back? Good question. As far as being in a band? There's nothing like the camaraderie on stage when everything is happening. Mm. When we catch a groove in any band, it becomes almost spiritual. When you're just going and I don't want to say out of body because that's extreme, but you catch a wave and everybody's on the same plane. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, there's nothing comparable to it. And you kind of rift off each other. And, we, and this band communicates very well visually. Yeah, well so we could yeah. Elaborating, it's like almost telepathy. Like when, he, when he's doing the groove and he looks at me and they can almost read his mind what he wants me to do. So, and Big Joe as well, and Courtney too, and we're all like, that's we all, we all become in unison. You know, that is, that is a very, very, very unique thing in my book. And yeah, I mean, really it's, it, I don't know, it's kind of like, I mean, I, I'm a bit of like a hero worshiper. You think of like the, the star ball player, and you think, well, wouldn't it be great to be a member of the 1985 Chicago Bears? They seem to have so much fun together and that kind of thing. And that's what I think about rock and roll bands. Like, I love reading books about the Rolling Stones. And we have Keith Richards. He, he lives right in town. He'll eat at Luke's. You know, every once in a while you see an old guy in the corner. You go, like, really? Yeah, I didn't Keith know about Richard. this. Oh yeah, okay. no, he's, Where? he's uh, Luke's in Richfield. It's this little uh, French bistro down behind there, yeah. and I've seen him there like three times. He actually knows the owner. The owner is like uh, by uh, Luke's L U L U C K Pastries. Great place to go. But uh, I love reading, you know, stories about the Rolling Stones and they would have falling outs and they would get together and where were they when they recorded this song and, you know, it's, it's pretty good. How do you like being, like I say, the, the flower among the thorns? Are these gentlemen here? Are we dealing with any Harvey Weinsteins among us? Or what are we talking about here? They're mostly all right. <laughs> well, rock and roll is kind of like a real testosterone-driven kind of environment, Yeah, no, no they're a good, good bunch of guys. I trust them. Uh, <laughs> That's a tough question. That's our story and we're sticking to it. What do you enjoy most about being part of the band? Um, you know, it's, uh, I never really, I went to school for straight theater uh -huh. and I was not singing. I had grown up singing and it was like, just when I found these guys, it was like a spark that had kind of fizzled out and it, it was just brings back everything that gets me excited you know right, get so up in the morning and I like I get to sing today if you guys know like let's just say I don't know if you're playing somewhere say New Year's Eve but if you know you've got a gig it's if it's Tuesday and you're dealing with some stupid IT customer that you know doesn't know how to get his emails to come up can you be a broken you know whatever they're dealing with um, and you're like and you're thinking like hey you know, I got a gig Saturday night. Is it like, oh no, I got to, you know, schlub off with someone and do it? Or is that yeah, something live, that kind of gets you pumped? No, we live for the gig. Yeah, it's like, is it you, get Saturday Saturday? you definitely get excited yeah, beforehand mm -hmm. and live for that, for that night. It's always it's a, a lot of fun. The setup's a little bit. The <laughs> setup's a drag. It's a pain in the neck to but love all the stuff. Yeah. But it's well worth it. But when we, when we play, um, usually after a sound check, we know exactly where we stand. Right. Our sound checks tend to be a little bit loud, but everybody falls into a pocket and it's we become familiar uh -huh. everybody's family and it's so much fun to be part of this this team yeah. it's a band band circular it's a big ring and we are friends yeah. which isn't very common in a lot of bands yeah there's that's, that's yeah. an excellent point like what's we have a good time with each other yeah and then you know in my book that's the one that's what we're doing that's what that's why i'm here for. and i think that's infectious too you know, I think when you see a rock and roll band that's enjoying playing together, early Beatles. By the way, you cover the Beatles, the Stones, Motown, Bon Jovi, uh, a lot of different groups. Yes. And uh, from well, all the different decades. From the decades. Yeah. We go from the 60s mm -hmm. to today. You'll hear some of the stuff that we do on the radio today. Yeah. So, yes. All right, Kevin, you're the, you're the, you represent this generation, the now generation. If they say, like, hey, we want to play some more Led Zeppelin, are you like Led's who, or what do you think? No, <laughs> of course not. Um, absolutely not. I mean, that's the fun thing about being in a band like this, is you can play the older stuff, the stuff you appreciate, the stuff that, you know, builds the foundation for 
the stuff you love today, but then we can also play the newer stuff and it's really not an issue. Everyone gets to have their say and contribute their songs and no one gets laughed at. You can bring songs to practice and that's pretty cool because that's kind of rare to come by. You know, it's hard to come by a band that allows people to have equal say. Well, they call our group the Decades because they play music from the various decades and they're represented by the various decades. Joe, of course, is like, you know, from the early 1900s, and so he <laughs> represents them. Then we have people in the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, and the 60s, and it's really a, a great group. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go, because we've uh, recorded a couple of their songs, and they're going to play it, and uh, let's go to the videotape. I've been building it up. <laughs> As advertised, by the way. What's in it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
That's the name of the group. 
They're tight now. There was a little problem with the vocals on that. That wasn't the singers. That was just a technical problem. I blame it on the IT guy. He was too busy with his Les Paul jamming out. Uh, but uh, it was really, really good. The band is called Decades. Do you have uh, gigs coming up that you want to plug or just Nothing. look? Check your local list. Check your local list. We'll let you know via Facebook and Instagram and all these things when we're when we're playing. Right. Okay. We're we're in the lightning round. Quickly tell us with your brush with with rock and roll stardom back in the early 20s. I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, it, it was back in whenever. Yeah, what happened? 1973. I was in a band that uh, did all original stuff, and we willy nilly sent tapes out, and CBS Record picked up one of our tapes, and they loved it. They came to a live performance. They had us into uh, into their studios, 52nd Street in Manhattan, to perform for them. And they said, you guys are terrific. You've got at least one hit song in this five or six that we did for them. Uh, so we're going to sign you. They then went out to try to get a top flight producer. And they sent our, our tapes to Stevie Wonder, to uh, Jim Einer, who had just done Strawberry Alarm Clock, to uh, uh, Papillardi, who uh, was the mountain uh, bass player and producer. All of them were busy and too busy, so oh. they came back to say, sorry, we can't get a top flight producer, it's done. And that's when I, I literally hung up the bass for almost 30 years, stopped playing, the band broke up, and we went our separate ways. It was a very close brush with, uh, with making it. Wow. Yeah. And that was, uh, you could be on Don Kirshner's rock concert. Absolutely. Like that. Absolutely. All right, yeah. lightning round. Kevin, we'll start with you. Final thoughts. Final thoughts. Well, I've never been on a public access show like this and it was fun. How cool is yeah, that? Yeah, it was cool. We had a good time. Uh, Frank? It is fun. Thanks for having us here. Final thoughts. I love these guys. I love playing with them and when we are out playing somewhere, I'd love to have you join us. Look for decades. They're coming at you. Exactly. By the way, you're killing it on that Les Paul. Very impressive. Thank you very much. <laughs> sure. I love having fun and I'm in it for the fun, not the ID. Yeah, these guys <laughs> took everything. Uh, I love them. It's a, a blast and an honor to play with them. They've kind of uh, shown me the ropes of playing in a live band. So mm -hmm. I'll take. Hopefully, I'll take that with me forever. <laughs> All right. Well, listen. Thanks a lot. Thanks for coming in. Thank you for thanks having for us. Thanks for laying party. down those tracks, and we really appreciate it. And I want to go to your gig, so let me know. Absolutely. Keep me in the loop. We'll do so. All right. The group is called Decades. Remember that name, because they're coming after you now. When I opened the show this evening, I said that we may be having a very special guest this evening. And so now, if there's small children in the house, uh, have them come around the television. If there are children at heart of any age that would like to have a special encounter tonight in this studio to the vast viewing audience that's out there, we have the privilege of having Santa Claus join us and answer some of the questions that we've all wanted to know that only Santa Claus can answer. Questions like, how do you speak all those different languages when you go all around the world on one night? Questions like, do you ever have any problems with air traffic controllers? You know, I mean, the sleigh and all those reindeer, it's got to show up on ra radar somewhere. Has there ever been some F-16 scrambled because you were essentially an unidentified flying object in the sky? And everyone wants to know, how can you hit every house and go down the chimney eat some, some crackers or cookies that are left out, know who's been naughty and who's been nice. I mean, if you think of Washington right now, they spend their entire time up there in Washington with the incredible, by the way, I don't know if you hear the bells. I hear some bells. That could be, that could be Santa Claus. That could be Santa Claus right now. He could be, right. you know, I, I hear those, those reindeer hoofs on the roof. I, I, can, I can hear them, and you never know. Santa Claus could be joining us at any minute. And so if there are young children in the house and they'd like to meet the real Santa Claus, here he is. Santa, thank you so much for coming in. Oh, it's my pleasure, Marty. It's always my pleasure to come and see you. This is very, very exciting. I tell you, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little choked up here. Yeah, I notice your cheeks are getting a little red. They are. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm really excited about this. I mean, people have so many questions that they have for you. And now we know tonight is not Christmas Eve. Of course not. No. So I would imagine you're pretty busy on the North Pole 
making all the toys, checking the list, who's been naughty, who's been nice. What is your life like now? This has got to be the red zone, as it were, right before Christmas Eve. You know, it's kind of an amazing thing. I think the same thing that's happening at the North Pole probably happens at your house at Thanksgiving. There's so much to do, and your wife is probably running around baking and decorating and setting the table, and, and everybody thinks it's impossible. It's not going to happen, and yet it happens. It does. So, so good things happen. Christmas is a good thing. You know, it is. There's so much division and unhappiness it seems like in the world right now it certainly does what what is your message to the world and by the way you've got to love the snow have you noticed some of the snow is beginning to lay down I certainly have. and preparing the connecticut the nutmeg state new england yes. for a classic christmas yes. in connecticut definitely definitely i was very impressed but what what is your message to the world especially on you know given all the issues that are, are are out there and people kind of you know competing with each other and conflicted what's your message to the world the message is really very simple I mean think about what Christmas is it's a time of giving In many cases secret giving it's a time of sharing it's a time of peace it's a time of brotherhood it's a time of friendship and when you think about it, there really isn't any reason why that couldn't happen every day of the year. If we can make it happen one day of the year, why can't it happen every day? You know, I, th I think you're right. I do think that, that people do during, they get the Christmas spirit and uh, they get reunited with family and friends. Very and much so. If you can slow down a little and just say how much we have in common with each other. Exactly. What exactly. unites us seems to, to trump what divides us. It's easy to point a finger and say something divides us, but really, if you look in the mirror, that's what divides us. Yeah. Look in the mirror and see what you see. That's really where the problem starts. You can, anybody can make a change in their life, and Christmas is a great time to do it. It really is. It truly is. It's a great time if you have that certain sweetheart that you've always wanted to ask to marry, and you have a job and you can support that person, and you're in your late teens, 20s, 30s, maybe 40s. Absolutely. And it's a great time for an engagement, don't you think? I do. Do you have anything particular that you're thinking about? I do. I am married. Oh, and, I know that. Uh, and so I asked my wife to marry me, and we actually had a winter wedding. Um, but I had asked her to marry me the previous summer, but we had the wedding on, on um, actually, I better be, oh, it's actually tomorrow's my anniversary, <laughs> Santa. I'm so glad we remembered. Yes, it's December. It's an important thing to remember. It's a very important thing, Santa. I'm so glad. Yes, tomorrow's our anniversary, and we have a wonderful, we're going to go to the opera, actually. It's going to be great. Um, but uh, my son, who he can't hear this now because he's in Virginia, but he has a certain someone. He's... Let's see, he's like 28 years old. Oh, that's perfect And, age. you know, I thought he should, you know, it'd be a good time of year to uh, propose to her, his friend. Oh, I agree. I but agree. there's not much I can say. Maybe you could put in a word for me, Santa. Well, I mean, one good thing about proposing this time of the year is that it's very difficult to forget your wedding anniversary. <laughs> you would think. You, you would, would think, think that. You would think that. I've got a lot going on, Sam. You know, I, you're oh, right. I know you do. I know you do. <laughs> Believe me. Say, I'm saying i got a lot going on to a man who literally travels around the globe and brings presents to every single child who's, you know, well, well either I, naughty or not. I've nice. seen what you're doing today. You're a busy man. There's no question. <laughs> and I'm surprised that you made the trip to Italy. I did, yeah. Yes, I, I, yes. yes, I was in Italy. I was in uh, Florence, Italy. It must have been very nice. It, it's gorgeous there. I have, I've been very blessed, Santa. Very blessed in my life with my children. My oldest daughter, who has, who just had a, our first grandchild, very nice. Malaya, a gorgeous uh, little girl who's seven months old now. I but, believe that her one of her parents is from the Philippines. Is that, that correct? That's who, exactly right, yes, Santa. You yes. know, you know everything. Oh, I know a few things. Yeah, know no, everything. it's true. My son-in-law is 
is originally from the Philippines. Nice. So my, my granddaughter is um, part Filipino, half Filipino, a quarter German, and a quarter Irish, which oh, is it, which is beautiful. quite a combination. And I'll, I'll uh, unabashedly play a little bit of a, a video for you of the of the baby if you have the, if you can get this on video. This is something that. I don't know. It's just the cutest thing you've ever seen in your life. I'm sure. But hold on, I'll I'll, I'll cue that up. If uh, whenever you're ready, you let me know, and we'll play the video. But um, yes, our daughter uh, has had a granddaughter for it's our first grandchild, so this will be her first Christmas. Very her name nice. is Malaya. Beautiful. Name. Um, and uh, that means uh, like fresh wind or freedom in Tagali, which is the native language well, of. Course of it is. Uh, of the Philippines. Of the Philippines, yeah. Uh, hold on one second because I uh, just got to cue this up, but it's worth it. This child. Oh, I'm is, sure. And here we go. Let's certain. see if I can cue it up just once. Here we go. There she is. <laughs> is that the cutest thing you've ever seen? It's got to be one of the cutest things I've ever <laughs> Isn't seen. Isn't that? <laughs> look, look what Santa left under the tree for us. There she is. Now, she wanted to be here tonight, but. Her mommy says it was too late, because cause Santa really has to work late. Well, I'll play that one more time in case you missed it. But um, uh, So that's my granddaughter, and this is going to be her first Christmas. Her name is Malaya Elizabeth Baccaro, and there she is. I can't stand it. Okay, we're going to go one more time. This is a 15-second clip. Just one more time, and I won't wear you out with this, Santa. You know, no, people can, you, out, can, yeah. you know how people can be with their grandkids. But seriously, is that not 15 seconds of joy? Absolutely. That little baby joy there. Joy and beauty. <laughs> but there she is. So she is our, our pride and joy. Of course. And uh, this is going to be her first Christmas. And uh, I'm hoping that you might have a little something, something for her, you oh, know, under the tree. I, I definitely do. She loves jumpers, onesies. Of course. You know, where of you course. zip up from like the ankle all the way up. Yeah. They're very handy yeah. that Read way. She, she, she goes through bibs. She likes a good, you know, bib. And um, I don't know if she knows what her favorite color is or anything like oh, that. Probably not yet. She's a little young. But as far as going to Italy, yes. My, so my oldest daughter is a flight attendant with uh, the airlines. Wonderful. And so we can get these free flights nice. if there's seats on the plane. So she says, you know, hey, Italy's open, or do you want to go to Scotland or something Very like that? Very nice. So my wife and I, you know tend to do that so it's really fun. I certainly don't blame you. I would take advantage of that opportunity Yeah, as if, well. you, if you have any more children, you and Mrs. Claus, encourage them to become flight attendants <laughs> because... I don't think that's going to happen, but I like <laughs> the sentiment. <laughs> you never know. Okay, so now with some of the questions that every, you know, inquiring minds want to know, there, there's a few because there's some skeptics out there. I know there are. There, there are. One will say, how is it possible for you with a sleigh and how many reindeer are there? Well, there's eight, unless it happens to be a foggy night, and then of course Rudolph would make it nine. Nine with the nose. Oh, so yeah, right. But only if it's a foggy night. Okay. We don't always have Rudolph on as part of the team. Okay, so it's a rain. It's eight. Granted, they can fly. Of course, they can. which is a big deal. But how do you hit every house in one night? Okay. Well, what what's is, the secret? Oh, there's a couple of things that you have to remember. Right now, it's dark here. It's nighttime here. It is. It's getting darker earlier, too. Guess what? In Japan, the sun's shining. So think about that. It's not just one night. It's one 24-hour period. Mm. And there's a lot of magic that goes on at the North Pole, as I'm sure you can imagine. Mm -hmm. we, we have this ability to make time slow down a little bit. When you were a little boy, remember the time from when you ate dinner to the time you had to go to bed? Yeah. On Christmas Eve, it seemed like forever. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. yeah, and it really wasn't, but it seemed like forever. Yeah, because you wanted Santa to come. And yeah, the presents of course, to be there. Yeah. of course, of course. So, so we've got that going for us. You know, the reindeer being able to fly, there's no stop signs, there's no right. traffic lights. Mm -hmm. There's no other traffic up there. Yeah. We're flying fairly shallow elevation, low elevation. Right. We're not worried about airplanes, helicopters, Maybe an occasional drone. You know, we're completely wood, with the exception of the sleigh bells. Right. Yeah. There's so there's no, no the radar doesn't pick up on us. Oh, okay. And of course, there wouldn't be any kind of 
thought that we might be a UFO or something like that because we don't yeah. have any lights. Yeah, because everyone everyone likes Santa Claus. Hold Pretty on, we have, we have a we have a caller calling in. Caller, do you have a question for Santa Claus right here in our studio? Yeah, Marty. What's Marty? I do, Marty. What's your question? Uh, Santa Claus. Santa Claus, what do you think about flying to the North Pole? How far you, how, how far you can fly? Well, flying to the North Pole is something that we do every, uh, basically, Christmas morning. Uh, were you thinking about uh, possibly joining me this year? What do you think about that, Carla? Would you like to join Santa and to fly to the North Pole? I do. I, do. I like to join him. Wow. All right, well, I'll tell you what, Santa has a cell phone, too, and I'll get Santa your contact information, and maybe uh, you can make that happen. Oh, we can. All right, Marty. All right, well, thanks for calling in. All right, Marty. All right. And by the way, our phone number is on the, the, the screen there, 438-2003. If you have a special wish or request for Santa, or maybe you know of someone who needs a little extra touch of Santa at this time of year, um, give them a call. You can, we'll put you right through to Santa. Now, you also, as Santa Claus, I know you have the big night where you make the deliveries, but you also have a chance to visit kids in hospitals. I do. Uh, oh, see, I do. What, tell me some stories about you know kids you've seen in hospitals or, or uh, senior centers and that kind of thing. Well, actually, I was visiting a uh, young woman tonight prior to coming here, which is why I arrived a little bit later than I intended to. But she was, um, she had been given some morphine earlier in the day, and she was asleep when I got there. And I waited quite a while for her to um, basically wake up. But she was very glad to see me. I can only imagine. You very wake glad. up, and there's Santa Claus in your hospital. Yes. Room. Yes, she um, <laughs> she gave me her list. <laughs> oh, really? She had a list? She had a list, and in fact, as I was leaving, she called me back over to her bed, added a couple more things. Oh, my. And as I was leaving, she called me back for one more. Is that right? That's right, and her mother was quite um, pleased. Her mother had looked terrible when I got there, and I'm sure she's feeling terrible. But that was the first time I saw the mother smile. Aww. So that, it was a very good experience. Wow. Very good experience. But, but you know, I, I feel a little awkward speaking so much about me, Marty. I did want to point something out Yes. to you. I, um, I was sorry to hear that you lost your bid for the uh, political position you were seeking. It's true, Santa, yes. But I was very proud of how gracious you were in accepting that. I see it. And I, I can only hope that you set a good example for a lot of other people. Well, coming from you, Santa Claus, that I, I really appreciate that. Oh, no, 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 no. You, you deserve every word of praise that I'm offering. I'm well, very proud no, of you. I'm, I'm, I appreciate that very much. Yes, I was on the Board of Finance in the town of Ridgefield for 24 years, and I was up for election, and the Democrat got more votes than I did, and so they won. and. And that's how democracies work, and, it is. and uh, it is. there's uh, there's turnover, and so I wish them all the luck in the world, and congratulate them, and move on. That's the graciousness that I'm speaking of. Very <laughs> proud of you. Well, thank you, thank very you very proud much. Of you. Now, in your travels, um, I would imagine you get to eat a lot of different kinds of food. Oh, that's of course cool. you have you know the the sort of uh, North Pole. I would imagine a lot of porridge, uh, the soups. Um, what, what are some of the foods you eat? And, and if you could, like I'm sure when you're like delivering to like Mexico, they must have some wonderful Mexican cuisine. Oh, of course and, they do. And of when you're in, in, you know, delivering in Japan, you probably have some good sushi. Oh, excellent, What, excellent. what, what if, if you had your way, what, what are the kinds of foods that you like the best? That's a very difficult question to answer because there's so many really good foods out there. You're right that the, the, the menu that we have at the North Pole is a little bland, but we just don't have a lot of ingredients that are available. Now, the one great thing about Connecticut yeah. is that you have wonderful pizza here. It's unbelievable. It's really very, yeah. very good. Yeah. What we have at the North Frank Pole. Frank Pepe's is pretty good. Oh, I know this is not commercial, but my gosh, that stone oven thing that they do, it's yeah, unbelievable. Very good, uh -huh. very good. 
Uh, what we have for pizza at the North Pole is basically like toast with ketchup on it. It's, it's wow. very bad. So, of course, coming to Connecticut pizza, and I will always bring pizza back for Mrs. Claus. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So after all you do, you think enough to, to bring back a, 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 a pizza to Mrs. Claus. Oh, of Claus. course, of course, of course. If she wasn't there right now, I'm sure that things in the workshop would not be going very smoothly. Now, when you say, like, when you're out, because you have to do media, you know, television interviews like this, you're, you're very much sought after public figure. But Mrs. Claus really keeps the home fires burning, doesn't she? She truly does. Mm -hmm. She truly does. She's a very inspirational woman. And this is a time in history when I think women are finally being recognized for the important roles that they have provided, not only as mothers and wives, but as scientists, as political analysts, as authors, as actresses, as so many things. Yeah. So, I mean, she's worthy of the same consideration. I, I truly believe that. Now, this time of year, too, of course, when I was younger, you, you know. That was I mean, quite a while ago. It was a long time ago. It really was. But we would have like one or two Christmas specials. Of course, there oh, would yes. be the oh, Rudolph yes. the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Yep. And, the, and the Island of Unwanted Toys and the kind of, uh, you know, very scary, you know, abominable snowman that would come out. <laughs> and then he was put on a float and, and everyone teased him. And, you know, we know this. That was one of the specials. And I think there was like the, the King Family Sings at the Rockefeller Center. And that was about it. Now... You got a couple hundred of these Christmas stories. But when you think of It's a Wonderful Life, Miracle on 42nd Street, the, the, the movie, you know, uh, Rudolph the Red News Reindeer, when you settle in, and I, I understand you have a nice 62-inch flat screen up in, in, in the North Pole. Is that true? I don't think it's true? quite that large, but it's a very good size. A good size, Much good size. Okay. than the one we had So which, which of these movies where you're the main character really captures the spirit the best, do you think? The spirit of Christmas probably is captured best in It's a Wonderful Life, although I'm not a character in that. But the spirit of Christmas, which we spoke of earlier, yeah. is there. Oh, absolutely. And this poor man feels he's a failure when he's been so important to so many people and their lives would have been totally different if he had not been a part of it. Hmm. And when he comes to realize that, he's also realizing that material wealth is, we all need money. We all have to buy groceries. We all have to pay rent or mortgage payment and whatever else. But once you get beyond the basic needs of any human being, everything else is really fluff. It's it really true. is. Yeah. And that movie personifies that. And when you think about it, think about all the characters in that movie. Who is the one that you would most want to be like? Yeah, it would be the, the main character who of finds course. out, surrounded by his family. He's and really. His community? His community. You wouldn't want to be Mr. Potter, would you? No, even though he kind of had all the money and he the had power all the money, and control. Of course, of course, but George. George is the one you'd want to be like. Yeah. Yeah. And he's the one that's having the wonderful life. They're all having a wonderful life, but largely because of him. And he realizes mm. that as his life is wonderful because of them. His brother Harry, far more famous. Yeah. But who was the man that you'd want to be? Yeah. The George. guy you could count on. Now, as far as this whole thing where you decide who's naughty and who's nice, um, do you find that difficult? Is it hard for you to make that determination? Or do you feel that pretty much all the little boys and girls are really nice deep down? I do believe that. Yeah. I do. I do. There are some that truly are not nice deep down. And, and it's sad because in most cases, I don't know that their lives are ever going to be any different. It's, I have a friend. Um, and he was a corrections officer in a juvenile facility many years ago. And he told me that he could tell which of the boys that came in were going to go on to be career cr criminals and which ones would not. 
Hmm. And he said he was pretty accurate in his assessment. So I do believe that there's a lot of good in almost everybody, but for some reason, some people just don't seem to be able to bring the good out. And it's a very sad thing. And obviously, the more encouragement we can offer a child like that, mm -hmm. the more caring, the more compassion, the better the chances that that child will, in fact, grow up to be a quote unquote good person. Mm -hmm. Now, when you look at who's naughty and who's nice, when you think of the nice kids, are, do you have some examples of little children, boys and girls that have really gone above and beyond to, to be nice? There's actually like one little tidbit. There's a video right now on the internet and it's this little toddler. Maybe he's like two years old or something. And of all things, his big sister, who's maybe three or four, is in this wrestling match. <laughs> but this is an organized wrestling match and and he he thinks that the his little his big sister is being you know put upon by you know, <laughs> yeah. have you seen this video? No, no. He runs out of the stands and goes and tries to stop this <laughs> wrestling match thing. But that would be a nice thing. What, what do you, what do you look for, for in Absolutely. nice children? Uh, probably one of the nicest things that I've ever seen was in an orphanage in Mexico, in Oaxaca, which is the southern part of Mexico. I had been told that there were going to be 46 children there and that 28 were going to be girls. And I bought, brought 28 necklaces with me to give the girls. Okay. The numbers were off. There were 29 girls. Okay. And one of the first girls that I had given a necklace to, when she realized that I did not have a necklace to give to this very young girl, uh -huh. she took hers off and said, it's really a little bit too big for me. I would like her to have the necklace Santa. Wow. Yeah. And, and what did, what, I mean, that, that's a perfect example. Of, some ch of a child or some person being good? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I found that very heartwarming. Wow. Um, Here's the here's the boy. If we can if we can get this on on uh, the video, I'll uh, I'll see if I can um, cue it up here. But this is this is the video. I don't know when, when you let me know when when it's ready. I'll play the video. But it's a video of I don't know where this is. Maybe it's in the middle of Iowa or something <laughs> like that, where they have two little girls that are rustling. But it's in an organized gym. But here comes. Here comes the little brother out to save the day. I don't know if they play it again. They're, they're the girls rustling. And, this, and the little boy comes out, and he's like, hey, someone's picking on my sister. I'm going to go help her. Well, he, he would definitely remain on the good list. He would, that, that, he would, that would be not... definitely on the good list. Let's see yeah. if I can cue that up one more time. All right, look for it now. Here we go. They're rustling. Here comes the little brother. Hey, get off my sister! <laughs> he, comes out of the, he comes out of the crowd. I remember one little boy who thought he was on the naughty list because of what he did right. was a similar situation. Uh -huh. His mother was in the dentist chair and he was in the waiting room and he was concerned because it had been a while. Right. And he went in and he saw that his mother's mouth had blood coming out of it and the dentist was oh my. trying to extract a tooth. And he actually attacked, attacked the dentist. Oh, jeez. So a very similar thing. I think that's a very human reaction, yeah. seeing somebody you love in yeah. danger or what you perceive. Well, I, I'll tell you, you have such a positive effect on people. Um, when people see you in the Macy's Day Parade, it brings joy to everyone's um, life. Well, thank life. you. When you know you think of even people that are in the army and they're on distance posts, you know they'll have a little Christmas tree and they'll oh, have absolutely. a little a little sense of your spirit. Absolutely. Um, and then you personally, the time you put in with uh, kids in hospitals and and uh, and so forth, it's just really uh, an honor to have you on the show tonight. And I just well, no, to no, no, the honor is all mine. I did bring you something, Marty. Oh my. It's in my bag here. Okay. It's a calendar from the North Pole. Oh, look at that. Santa Bill, 365 days of Christmas. Right. And now, that's the back of the calendar, Marty. There's right. the front. Okay, so I don't know if we can get a shot of this, but we have uh, you and your sleigh. 
Right, there you that's go. that's the sleigh I use to go between the workshops. So that's not the one I deliver the presents. In. Okay, and there you are. This is kind of a vintage uh, Norwegian sort of uh, a look. I don't know. I'll put these up where we put the videos if that helps. Oh, I'm not right. sure. Well, it, it, absolutely, if that works. This I, is the well. This is of course February, so that would be the. Um, uh, Valentine's Day. Santa. That's right. That's we'll absolutely see, we'll right. See that. And we'll just keep rolling with that. And this is March, so you're you're tapping the trees. Yes. Yeah, because you yes. got to do that. You know, you oh, got yeah. to get, get your maple syrup. Well, we don't. We the temperature won't allow us to grow. Okay. Sugar and then cane. April. My gosh, you know, you're you're you got Easter eggs you're going after. Of course. You know, because hey, even Santa celebrates Easter. Everyone does. Well, I think so. And then so. and then you got May with the flowers. Of course, lilacs are lilacs, one of Mrs. Claus's I love favorites. Small lilacs. And then it goes on from there. This is the best one, June, because you like cruising. Santa likes cruising. In a, in oh yeah, a, in a and that's Martin. He's the senior elf at the North Pole. Perfect. Well, Santa, thank you again so much oh, for no, coming in. Oh, no, thank you. No, it was my pleasure. Really my appreciate pleasure. it very Absolutely. much. And please do remember my, my granddaughter, Malaya. Oh, I will not forget her. And I she promise. does like jumpers and she does like onesies. Okay. So thank you so much, and we really appreciate Oh, no, you no, no. In. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank okay. you so much. And uh, this has been a special edition of the Marty Heiser Show. We're just blown away that we have Santa Claus with us. You know, I was going through some of these. They have that one where you're cruising, and then I'm going to put these up where we have the videos. Just a couple more uh, dates. Uh, this, of course, is, is uh, Santa, and Santa is very patriotic. He loves all countries, but he's very patriotic, so that's for the 4th of July. And then we have, um, uh, of course, in August, Santa's got to catch some rays, too. Of course. So there he is on the beach, and he's got to do that. And then uh, we have uh, Santa in uh, September with the apples. He's getting ready to, you know, put together some, some apple pies and things like that. And then you're building up October. you got the pumpkin. November, you're looking around to travel. And then December, Santa really starts focusing. So thanks again for coming in. We'll see you next time on the Marty Heiser Show. Next week, we got bitcoins. We got someone who's running for governor, and we have Pastor Jeffrey Ingram from Norwalk, Connecticut, will be in studio to talk about his book. How about Santa Claus? <laughs>